Right, a good day, uh, counting students, grade 11s. Let's have a look at uh, financial statements now of partnerships. So in our particular example, we've got John and Joe. The balances on the 1st of March 2019 was 200,000 and 400,000. That's the capital balances. Um, so for now, we're just going to focus on the capital accounts and what we're trying to focus on is interest on capital. I know that we did it in the previous exercise as well, but I just wanted to make sure that we understand how the interest on capital works. It doesn't really affect the notes to the capital account. It more affects the note to our current accounts. But seeing that we want to start with capital, let's just isolate this as a, as a, as a specific explanation. So in terms of the, the transaction, it says that John contributed 200000 on the 1st of August 2019. So there's three ways in which interest on capital can be calculated. So your first step would be to calculate the interest on capital. And a good tool to help you there would be your timeline. So in our case, we'll see here that at the beginning of the financial year, the balance is given to us. Right, so we'll see that John has 200,000. So then working out his interest on capital is fairly straightforward. It's 200,000 times. Let's say they tell us the rate is 10% per annum. But remember the 10% per annum could be calculated. They have to say whether we must calculate it based on the capital balances at the beginning of the year, during the year or at the end of the year. So if it's the beginning of the year, I'm going to say 200,000 multiplied by 10%. So then he, in his case, he's going to be paying 20, or we're going to pay him 20,000 Rand for interest on capital. So that will basically be for John. And then for Joe, he's going to basically get 400,000 multiplied by 10%. So he gets 40,000. So that's fairly straightforward. The same thing with end of the year. They say that John contributed 200,000 on the 1st of August 2019. So that means that if you look at John now, he also has 400,000. So at the end of the year, if they, if they tell us that we're doing the calculation based on the end of the year's calculation, then that means that both of them would get 40,000. Right. During the year, the only change that happened was for John. Right. So for Joe... Joe's interest on capital would basically be the same thing. For Joe, it, it would just be 40,000. But if you look at John, John had a balance of 200,000 from the first of the from the 1st of March up till the 31st of July. So that basically is March, April, May, June, July. So that's for five months. So what we would do is we'd say 200,000 times 10% times 5 over 12, right? And then it basically get 400,000 because from the 1st of July, suddenly his balance now is 400,000. So, like I said in a previous video, you work it out. If you're going to use this particular method, you work it out just as you would work out interest on fixed deposit. So, we're going to take that and we're going to times that by 7 over 12. So, that will basically, you can just use your calculator to work that out. That will tell you what the interest on capital is. Okay. So, we haven't done the interest on capital. has nothing to do with the notes, but that's just to help you guys in terms of that particular process. Right guys, so when it comes to the financial statements of partnerships, we're busy with a capital note. Your capital note tends to be around note number seven. So we wrote note number seven. Um, and then what we what we do is there's two there's two notes, it's capital and current accounts, right? So your current account notes fit very much uh, similar to what we did in the general ledger, except that it's in statement form. So what we're going to do now is have a look at our particular example. Remember in our example, Joe basically had a balance of 400,000. He didn't change at all. So for Joe, his uh, balance over there was 400,000. So you'll find that with Joe, we're going to have 400,000 over here. 
balance on the last of the previous year or sometimes it's balance at the beginning of the year. There was no additional capital contribution. There was no withdrawal or decrease of capital. That means that at the end of the financial year, Joe's balance was 400000 right? For John, John had a balance at the, at the beginning of the year or the balance on the last day of the previous financial year was 200000 but remember that in, in the case of John, he contributed an additional 200000 And there was no withdrawal. But remember, if there was a withdrawal, we would have to subtract that. So in other words, the balance on the last day of the financial year for John will now be 400000 For Joe, it's 400000 as well. And so our totals here will basically be 200000 plus 400000 So our total is 600000 at the beginning of the year, there's an additional 200,000 that's contributed, right? And now our balance at the end of the financial year is 800,000. So in a way, this helps us because when I add down and I add across, I must get to the same amount. So the amount that's going to appear in the owner's equity section of the balance sheet is basically going to be the 800,000 rand. Okay, so that will be 800,000. Okay, good day guys. Can you please complete this note for me? This is exercise one, capital note of Kelsey and Malika. The tip that I'll give you over here is that the balances of capital at the beginning of the financial year is actually zero because they're just starting the partnership. Okay guys, so if we have a look here, we'll see that uh, if you look at the answer now, um, you'll see that Kelsey at the beginning of the year, Kelsey, Malika, and the total was 000. Kelsey contributed 300,000 during the year. So even though it was on the first day of the financial year, um, it was 300,000. Because when she started, when we started on the first day of the financial year, technically the balance was zero. And then on the first day we contributed. That's why in the past they would say balance at the end of the previous financial year. But some of the newer uh, ways of, of, pu of putting it is that we'll say, what is the balance at the beginning of the year? So Kelsey contributed 300,000 during the year, and then Malika contributed the 150 plus the 400. So that would have been 550,000. So in total, we'll see that what was contributed during the year was 850,000. And then there was no withdrawal of capital during the year. That means that your balance at the end of the financial year would basically just be 300,000, 550,000, and the total is there for 850,000. Okay, guys, let's uh, complete exercise two now, which is a continuation of exercise one in a way. Um, but this time what you have to do is you have to complete the capital note on the 28th of February 2021. By now you should be uh, familiar with the, with the actual format of the note. If you're not familiar with it, first learn the format of the note and then after that do that. Don't just uh, copy from the previous exercise. Please first learn the format of the note. Okay guys, let's have a look at the answers quickly. So um, I ask that you please learn the format. It's important in general to learn the format um, in terms of financial statements. I know that at school level, oftentimes they'll give us the format, but sometimes it's good to know the format so that it's not new to you when, you when you're actually doing a test or you're doing an exam. So we start with a balance at the beginning of the year. So we started with that balance for Kelsey of 300,000. So remember, that was the balance that we had at the end of the previous year. And for Malika, we had a balance of 550,000. And uh, our total balance there was 850,000 Rand. And then what happened is that during the year, Kelsey contributed a, a vehicle valued at 100,000. Remember, we can contribute either things like vehicles or even buildings, you know, um, to the business. Normally, only fixed assets are regarded as um, capital or, obviously, money. So, we're going to take the 100,000 and contribute that 
add that to what Kelsey's contribution over there. And then it said that Malika withdrew 50,000. Okay, so withdrawal of capital, so that's 50,000. We're just going to put that in brackets so we can see that the balance at the end of the year for Kelsey is now 400,000. And for Malika, it's 550 minus 50, so her balance is 550,000 at 500,000 apologies 500,000 at the end of the year and once again we have to put the totals over here as well so it's 100,000 in total that was contributed additionally and in terms of withdrawal of capital we had 50,000 that was withdrawn so if you have a look at this if you if you go across it gives you 900,000 and if you go down it gives you 900,000 because 850 plus 100,000, that's 950. 950 minus 50 gives you 50,000. Okay, so for this particular lesson, I think we're just going to focus on capital. And in the next lesson on partnerships, we will look at the current accounts. Thank you for listening, everybody.